Yo, I'm, yo, that camera get on me. I don't like chat. You see now, I, I, I get canceled every week. This week I got canceled. The week after, the week before that I got canceled. I, yo, when them cameras come on, I don't know how to act. I don't. I will do anything to get to the top. I'll do anything to go viral for a viral moment. That's just me. A new streamer is on the rise, or he may have a significantly fast fall off. But I have a feeling we'll continue seeing a lot of him on the internet soon because he gave himself the name Mr. Do Anything to go viral. And so far, he's been living up to that name. From having the most random beef with Lil Tay in 2024, to beefing with the entire city of New York, to recently starting problems with the entire cartel, this streamer just at Snags is really willing to do anything in the world to go viral. I mean, the things that this guy has said already is really just idiotic and really crazy, but they have gone viral. And if you're not familiar with them or you wanna know more about them, then that's probably why you're here. But let's get into this video and really break down with the streamer who will do anything to go viral has done so far. But first, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to press that subscribe button to join the travels with the biggest driver because we're finally closing in on our goal of 1,000 subscribers. We're literally under 100 away. So I greatly appreciate it if you just press the subscribe button. And while you're at it, don't forget to press the very first link in my description to join my Discord server and become an official member of the community. And with all of that being said, let's talk about the things that Just at Snags has done so far to go viral. So the streamer Just at Snags, also known as Paul White Jr., started his streaming career just a few years ago. And he would start his streaming career just like a lot of other streamers within his community by playing a game called NBA 2K. And for a while, this was just mostly slow growth for him because a game like 2K isn't really a game that a lot of people can blow up off of anymore. And then he would take his talents to a game called Madden, and this is where he started gaining a little bit more traction. But the growth he started getting wasn't directly credited to the games he was playing. It was more so all of the antics and things he was doing on stream. From listening to New York Drill songs and beating his chest until it turned red, to yelling out and disrespecting deceased gang members from the New York Drill scene. <laughs> And honestly, this is where the doing anything to go viral thing would really start because he got to a point where he was literally just dissing dead rappers from New York that didn't know him, never knew him or anything like that. He's not even from the state or city of New York. He's from New Jersey, which is right beside it, but he's not actually from the towns. This would bring in a lot of viewers that were from New York or the New York drill scene that were in tune with the things that was happening or the people he was dissing. And sadly, this really even helped him gain traction because he has fans that he's ran into on the internet that have been yelling out deceased people's name from New York while tapping their chest aggressively. So as you can see, he's already having a very negative influence on the youth. But believe it or not, this isn't even close to the worst thing he would do in the rise of his career. You see, once he started gaining the traction from the disrespectful New York thing, he realized that the New York drill scene was kind of a box that didn't really have too much more room for growth. So then he decided to turn his attention away from New York drill rappers over to streamers. And honestly, this was the smarter option. Not that I agree with it at all, but it's definitely easier to grow in the streaming world by dissing and disrespecting streamers than it is to grow in the streaming world by disrespecting rappers. So he would just start disrespecting streamers that weren't the biggest streamers on the platforms by any means, but they were streamers that were already established and had a name within the community. And he would just disrespect them by saying he wanted to fight them or wanted to harm them in some physical way, or he was just wishing ill upon them. I can't wait till I see one of these streamers get shot this year. Who's it gonna be? Silky Annoying TV? It's gonna be Big X? Who, who, who gonna die this year, man? I hope it's somebody from the Hun Nation house. And you know, most people, they ignored him. Like, they weren't really worried about somebody who was, like, kind of clout chasing in a way and things like that. But you know, there's always going to be at least one person who's not going to tolerate any form of public disrespect. And that led to him getting the attention that he wanted. The first streamer that had, like, a name that I can recall giving him attention was a streamer named Big X. Some of you may know him as, like, Chronic X from Fortnite and things like that. But this was the first streamer that he really got into, like, a back and forth with that got pretty intense. And he went out of nowhere. I didn't see nothing. I didn't break up no desk or nothing. He want to say RP Snags dad. You know what I'm saying? He want to be funny. So I'm, I'm RP your best friend. That's a tough, tough loss. You know what I'm saying? I know you, it probably still hurts you. You know what I'm saying? Plus your girl was a slow. She was a thought, a smut. 
you know, getting dicked out by everybody. Everybody had their turn with her, you know what I'm saying? And if you don't know, like, the quote-unquote WNL community of streamers or whatnot isn't really as big as it seems. So if there is something going on with at least one streamer that has a name for himself and the clips start getting posted on Twitter, most people is going to see it. And that's exactly what ended up happening for this beef right here. Because while all of this was going on, a bit streamer named Aiden Ross, who we've talked about multiple times on this channel that I'm sure all of you know, was in the middle of organizing his first ever boxing event. And he came across some clips of just that snags that would land a streamer that would do anything to go viral on Aiden Ross's radar. So after Aiden started seeing him around more, Aiden started reaching out to him and the two started talking and became closer over time. And this led to just that snags getting a fight on Aiden Ross's first ever boxing event card. And this was almost the perfect person person for Aiden Ross to find at this time because not only was he willing to do anything to go viral as he said but he had a lot of shock factor to him and he would say it do anything as long as people gave him some LMAOs in the chat and if you're trying to get into like the fighting industry then you know that type of person is needed within that industry in order to hype up fights like a person that's just very disrespectful and will say anything to his opponent to get under his skin is literally perfect for the world of combat sports I mean at times Aiden Ross even referred to just that snap as his Conor McGregor. And on Aiden Ross's very first fight card, just that Snaz fought not one, but two people. His original fight was against one of Aiden Ross's closest friends named Cuffum, who is also a streamer. And then after that, he ended up fighting Big X, who he had actual beef with, as I just explained. And with him just talking crazy and doing not one, but two fights, at the time of all of this, the chat loved him. I mean, he was extremely entertaining. He was funny. It honestly felt like Aiden found like a diamond in the rough in the streaming world. But I think what a lot of people fails to realize is that everyone wants the viewers and the numbers and things like that until they get the viewers and the numbers and then they don't really know how to maintain it or what to do with those numbers at all. So after the entire first boxing event, just that Snaz got what he wanted. He went viral. He had his foot in the door in the streaming world. He had a direct connect to a bit streamer like Aiden Ross. And it seemed like his career was just spiraling upwards. And with this character that he had already portrayed to be on the internet, he had to keep that character going because that's what people were tuning into him to see. That's what people wanted to see. They wanted to see the crash out that was seeing red and would do anything to go viral. And this is exactly what ended up landing him banned on both Twitch and Kick as of right now. But let me explain. Well, you see, after the first fight and everything like that, he was starting to get real numbers, real viewers more and more people were talking about him. Aiden Ross even referred to him as his favorite streamer at the moment. And we all know what an Aiden Ross cosign can do for a streamer. So just that Snaz continued doing what he was already doing and trying to diss streamers and things like that. But as you keep growing and growing, you realize, okay, you have to do something to entertain more people because it's a big difference between trying to entertain like 500 to 1,000 people and trying to entertain 1,000 to 5,000 people. So this will lead to him doing some pretty crazy things for content. And the very first mistake and probably the biggest mistake that he'll ever make in his career is in this clip that I'm about to show you right now. Yes. You 14, 14. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that what grade is that? Like a sophomore? Eighth grade. Sophomore? Eighth grade? Sophomore. Can I play with that sophomore little? Sophomore's like 16. What? Can I play with that little eighth grade? <laughs> so and as you can see just from that very sick clip that just that snaz was willing to do and say anything for views and yes that sick clip did go viral for the completely wrong reasons and it really backfired into a lot of people calling him things like a pedal and you know everything like that that he deserves to be called but in his mind he was just doing it for content which a lot of kick streamers actually do and i don't know who like told y'all that was something to do for content but that's what a lot of people is doing right now i don't know what's going on but that's not the point of this video the focus of this video is solely on just that snags so after that clip going viral and all the backlash he got from it he ended up issuing an apology that was obviously like fake and something he didn't take serious at all i think he even mentioned that the video was ai generated and whatnot to everyone who is concerned i would like to apologize to those who have been affected by a recent video clip that has came out i would first like to say that video clip is completely out of my character for i have a mother a sister and other family members who are females Therefore, I respect females and would never want to endanger anyone. 
With everything being joked about so loosely on the internet, I believe that this clip was taken too far and needs to stop. I would do my part as an influencer by never indulging in such behavior no matter what. Lastly, I want to apologize to my family and fans and supporters. No one is perfect and mistakes are often made. Obviously, he just didn't take that situation serious at all. And I don't know what like black SUVs Aiden Ross got pulling up to people's houses, but like a week after that situation happened, it seemed like everyone just forgot about it. Like just that snatch just went back to trending upward. And after that situation, he just returned back to doing what he was doing to begin with, which was dissing rappers, dissing streamers, all types of things like that. And it continued to work all the way up until Aiden Ross his next boxing event for the month of February. And at this boxing event, he ended up fighting Aiden's friend Cuffum again in an MMA style match, which he ended up winning. And the next day was the actual boxing event, which he was scheduled to fight at. But I guess after the MMA match, he had got hurt. So he didn't end up boxing, but he was still one of the highlights of the event without even having to step in the ring. He also met some pretty big content creators like DDG, DDG's brother Dub, the Shea Frost, and other well-known creators as well. But after the second boxing event, just at Snaz's career would take a turn for the worse because he made probably the most dangerous mistake that he could have made. Now, it wasn't anywhere near as bad as the first mistake was morally. I mean, it's just no excuse or anything for that at all. But this one was just very dangerous. He thought it was smart to not only diss the entire country of Mexico, but to diss El Chapo and the entire cartel as well. And this clip quickly became one of the most viral clips on the internet because it got posted to every streaming media outlet that it was. I mean, literally every clip page was posting it and it did millions of views each time. I'm every Mexican shot. El Chapo. Oh, El Chapo's knuckle. Fuck the whole cartel. Suck my nigga. And I'm going to Mexico next week. What, nigga? And this clip ended up doing exactly what just that Snaz wanted it to do. Because like I said, everything he does is for attention and views. I mean, he calls himself Mr. Do Anything to go viral. And viral he went. He received a lot of backlash for this and people saying that he was crazy for it and whatnot. And this ultimately led to him doing another troll apology video saying that he was sorry to El Chapo and the cartel. He was actually referring to someone in his Twitch chat named El Chapo. You know, somebody came in my chat named El Chapa. You know, he just made the account. You know, he's obviously said he's part of the cartel. He's obviously fake cartel. But, you know, he threatened my family. You know, so I was just saying, like, you know, fake the fuck the cartel. But we know he's not really part of the cartel. You know, uh, the real cartel, I would never disrespect. You know, I, I'm shaking in my voice just imagining how you guys would yoke my little bitch ass up and just, like, slice me up with no and give no fucks. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't want y'all to, you know, do nothing to me or my family. You know, I'm a bitch. You know, I, I just want to apologize, you know, to all the Mexicans people i love mexican you know uh, i'm thinking about going to you know um you know mexico this year and i don't want no static with none of y'all you know i would love to get on the phone with el chapo and and, and and him tell me that me and him is good you know el chapo i would love, would love to be part of the cartel and work for you big dog you know what i'm saying and as you could tell from the clip he was 100 percent trolling the entire video like he said that he even wanted el chapo to reach out to him personally so he could come and work for him like bro the guy isn't a serious person at all and things will only just get worse and worse for just that snaz as time continued because another monkey clip of just that snaz hit the internet and ended up going viral and this clip was of him making fun of a deaf girl which in his defense at the time he didn't know was deaf but his initial reaction to seeing the person was to troll them i guess if that's what you want to call it and after doing that that's when he found out that she was deaf and the clip just makes him look very bad not bad enough your nose you got the beak on you you look you look like you stink your hair look like your hair look mad rough like comb your hair a little bit your teeth is you know, pussy your teeth is pussy yellow what the fuck stop speaking sign oh language God, fuck so all that sign language you deaf i am actually deaf no you're I'm not because like, no you do not bro don't be with oh shit my fault i'm going to have i'm going to have and of course he got what he wanted and the clip went viral in fact so viral that Lil tay the youngest flexor ended up saying it and went on a rant about just that snaz on Twitter, which led to the two of them getting in the most random beef of 2024. So after Lil Tay went on her rant, just that snaz took it upon himself to react to it on stream, and this is what he had to say about her. I see that little bitch, I'ma break her fucking neck, I'ma step on her fucking skull, I'ma break her skull in half. All I heard was Lil Tay die, I got so happy, I was gonna go to your 
tombstone. I was gonna go to your fucking graveyard. I was gonna pee, pee all over that. Shit. And if you thought that was bad, it only got worse because this is what just that snaz decided to follow up with. Come to SB Island, uh, Little Tay. Let me show you around FD Island. And to that, Lil Tay will respond on Twitter by saying, violates, he's literally being racist and saying weird pedal things about me, a 14 year old, and threatening to harm me. Why does he still have a platform? Men are so disgusting. And this would probably be the most viral thing, including just that snaz in his career. And it was for the completely wrong reason. This tweet had over 6.3 million views and over 110,000 impressions overall. And with this little tape beef, it just went completely bad for him because she ended up posting the original monkey clip that I talked about earlier in the video. And once that got a lot of traction, it was basically over. With people asking how could someone like this have a platform and calling him all types of pedos and things like this, it was very hard for Kick not to ban him. So shortly after that, that's exactly what the Kick platform did. They ended up banning just that snaz for one month. Although it's still up in the air why he got banned, some people were saying that he got banned for the original monkey clip that happened over a month ago and there are some people saying that the reason he got banned was for the second clip of where he said he wanted little tay to visit him on that weird island or whatever the case was overall i think both of the clips were pretty ban worthy i mean i don't think they're in the wrong for banning him he's lucky that it's only a month and not a perma to be honest with you but i think it's pretty apparent that just at snaz will literally do and say anything to go viral he doesn't care what he says or who he disrespects or what happens to his career all he wants to do is get the viral clip and the views and things like that and so far he's been doing a good job at going viral just for the complete wrong reasons so maybe if he thought of some good ways to go viral maybe he could turn his career around but it's gonna be very hard at this point i ain't gonna lie but you guys know i value your opinion so you let me know what is your opinion or just that snaz i'm pretty sure it's nothing positive but do you think that he deserves to be permaban do you think he should be deplatformed what do you think of his entire rise in the streaming world honestly right now it's just something completely weird just going on with kick as a platform with people doing crazy things to get views to begin with so we'll see what happens with just that snaz but if you're new here don't forget to press that subscribe button to join the travels with the biggest trapper we're literally under 100 subs away from 1000 yo that's so crazy to say y'all been going crazy also shout out to your rage for reacting to one of my videos and that helped a lot but press that subscribe button y'all because we're almost there and after that is only up but if you enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up if you didn't give me a thumbs down any feedback is good feedback for me as always you know i appreciate all the love and support and I'll catch y'all boys and girls in the next banger, man. Bye. Have a beautiful time.